What if I told you there was a way to have perfectly straight teeth and never need anything like braces or any Invisalign? And no, I'm not talking about Smile Direct Club or anything like that either. And you might think that I'm some crazy conspiracy theorist or something like that, but if you look at history, this is exactly what our ancestors did. And it wasn't even that long ago. If you look at any skull over a thousand years ago, you'll see that all of them have these perfectly straight teeth and these wide jaws, and they also have all of their wisdom teeth in the right place and fully erupted. Even Stanford evolutionist Richard Klein, who has looked at a ton of fossil records, has said that he's never seen an early human skull with crooked teeth. You know, if you think about it, why would the human body be designed to have our teeth come in crooked and to have our wisdom teeth come in sideways or impacted to the point where we need a surgery because otherwise they'll cause a ton of pain or possible infections. And if you ask a lot of different dentists or doctors why your teeth come in crooked or why your wisdom teeth always need to be extracted, you'll get a lot of unsatisfying answers. A lot of times they'll say it's genetics. but. I don't think biology is supposed to work that way. Biology isn't supposed to be designed so that your teeth come in in the wrong position and that your wisdom teeth cause a lot of pain and need a surgery to come out. And actually, if you look at all the data, you'll see that crooked teeth is not something that's genetic. It's actually linked back to a change in our diets. So industrialization really started happening about a thousand years ago. And after that, food started getting softer and softer. And they started refining a lot of our grains, and they started taking the fiber away from a lot of our foods. And as a result, humans didn't need to chew their food as much. If you look at before industrialization, you'll see that humans would be eating more whole foods. So they'd be eating a lot more whole grains, their vegetables would be more raw, their meats would be tougher. So they would spend a lot more time during the day chewing. Actually, humans would spend about four hours in the day chewing their food. Think about that for a second. Imagine spending four hours out of your day chewing your food. Oh my God, this is so exhausting. This food takes so much chewing. Before industrialization, human skulls and jaws didn't really change a whole lot. They were always wide and their jaws grew forward and they had all this space and all their teeth would magically erupt in the same position. But now if you date it back, even in the last 300 years, we have seen some drastic changes in our jaw sizes. Now our jaws have started growing smaller and skinnier, and our faces have gotten more elongated. And as a result, our teeth have become a lot more crooked, and a lot of times we need to get our wisdom teeth extracted because there's no room for them to come in in our mouth. Now just so you know, 300 years for all these drastic changes in our jaws is way too fast for evolution to work. That's why instead it has to be a change in our environment that caused these changes in our jaws. And that change in our environment is a change in our diet. And specifically, eating these softer foods and not using our jaw muscles has caused our jaws to start shrinking. Now this is a real problem because it's more than just affecting your aesthetics. It's more than just your teeth becoming crooked and your wisdom teeth needing to come out. There are a lot of diseases that are associated with smaller jaws. And these are things like heart disease, eczema, a lowered IQ, and even depression, ADHD, Alzheimer's, and sleep apnea. Now why does this change in diet cause a change in our jaw sizes? Well, when you don't use your mouth to chew, you're not triggering those stem cells that are in your jaws. When you trigger these stem cells in your jaws, it causes that jaw to start growing wider and more forward. But instead, when all you're eating is these softer foods that don't require much chewing, then you don't trigger those stem cells. And now your jaw is left to stay narrow. And this also causes your jaw to start hanging open. And this is something called poor oral posture. So ideal oral posture, or the ideal way your mouth should be at rest at all times, is your lips should be closed, your tongue should be touching the roof of your mouth, and your teeth should be slightly touching. This is the ideal way to be at rest. But instead, when your jaw is constricted and narrow, it's really hard to have that proper oral posture. Instead, what you get is this poor oral posture where your jaw is slightly hanging open. Now, this is kind of a twofold problem because not only is your jaw constricted and causing all these other issues, 
but now your breathing gets affected. Because when your jaw is always hanging open like this, then your mouth is always open, and now it turns you into a regular mouth breather, where you're regularly breathing through your mouth instead of using your nose. And also, it makes your breathing harder in the first place. Because when you have this narrow constricted jaw and this narrow constricted face, then it makes your whole airway more narrow and constricted. So it makes it harder for air to come into your lungs in the first place. Mouth breathing is a major problem, and it's especially a big problem in kids. It's still a big problem in adults, but the reason it's an even bigger problem in kids is because it can still be corrected. So this is the time you want to address it, if you have a kid or if you are a kid watching this. One study was looking at 150 school children in Brazil, and they found that 53% of those kids are regular mouth breathers. Now, I see a lot of kids in my practice too, and I think that number could be even higher in my practice, even closer to 70% of kids. And mouth breathing causes all sorts of problems in adults and in kids. When you're a mouth breather, you're more likely to have sleeping issues like sleep disordered breathing or sleep apnea. You're more likely to show symptoms of ADHD because when you're a mouth breather, you're more likely to be chronically tired. And if you look at the symptoms of someone who is chronically tired and chronically sleep deprived, and if you look at the symptoms of someone that has ADHD, those symptoms are practically the same. Also, people who are mouth breathers are going to be over breathing. They're breathing too excessively. And this will do a couple things. One, it'll keep you in this fight or flight response in your body where you have two modes. You have your sympathetic mode and you have your parasympathetic mode. Your sympathetic mode is your body's fight or flight mode and this is when your body needs to go into survival mode. So when you're working out in the gym, this is when your sympathetic nervous system is activated. This is good to activate at certain times, but you don't want it to be chronically active. But people who are regular mouth breathers will have this chronically being activated. And the other problem with breathing too excessively is you lose too much carbon dioxide. Every time you exhale, you release CO2 or carbon dioxide, and every time you inhale, you intake oxygen. And the problem with that is when you end up losing too much CO2, you actually end up losing oxygen. Because if you don't have enough CO2, then you don't have enough oxygen that's being delivered to your cells. Even if the oxygen gets into your lungs, it doesn't mean it's going to go to your cells. You need to make sure you have enough CO2 as well. This is also called the Bohr effect if you want to look it up. And the last thing I wanted to mention with mouth breathing is now that your jaw is constantly hanging open, your face is always going to be moving and growing in that elongated direction. Now, if you compare that to someone who has this proper oral posture, someone who has their tongue always against the roof of their mouth and their lips always closed, that person is going to start to have a wider and more forward growing jaw. Because when your tongue is resting against the roof of your mouth, the roof of your mouth will start to grow in the shape of your tongue. What we see in mouth breathers is they have this really narrow roof of the mouth and something called a high palatal vault, where basically the roof of their mouth is really high up, and that's because everything is so constricted. When someone's tongue is constantly resting against the roof of their mouth, especially as their jaw is developing, then that palate will start to grow wider and also start to grow more forward, and it'll start to grow in that U shape of that tongue, and that is how we want your palate to look. And when you have this broader, wider palate, you're going to be much more likely to have all your teeth come in the right place. So where jaws becoming smaller was a factor of two different things. The first was a change in our diets, and the second was a change in our breathing. So if you're watching this, you're probably wondering, how can I possibly fix this? Well, I can tell you if you're an adult, then it's going to be very hard. Because if you're an adult, you can't widen your face as easily as someone who's a five-year-old. But luckily, if you really want to expand your jaw, there are still ways. So one way is to actually get a surgery done where you open that suture in the middle of your palate and you put an appliance there that will actually expand your jaw. Now, I don't recommend this to everybody because the recovery from that surgery can be very painful and it can cause a lot of complications. Now, some people have had success with other devices that don't involve a surgery but can still open up your palate a little bit. One person that this device worked for is James Nestor, and he actually wrote a book on breathing, and he talks about how this homeoblock device actually expanded his jaw, and he has scans that actually prove 
that he actually gained bone in the roof of his mouth. Now, if you don't want to get any sort of device or any sort of surgery, I don't blame you. But there are ways to still improve your breathing if you are an adult. Now, the two simplest ways you can do that are by using a nasal dilator when you're sleeping and also a mouth tape. Basically, your goal should be to start breathing through your nose at all times of rest. So during the day, make sure you keep focusing on only using your nose to breathe. And at nighttime, you can use these two devices, that nasal dilator and that mouth tape, literally just a piece of tape that goes over your mouth to ensure that you're only using your nose to breathe. Now, if you're struggling breathing through your nose, there is a nose unblocking exercise you can do. And basically it involves taking a normal inhale and exhale through your nose and then holding your breath while bobbing your head back and forth. So it'll look kind of like this. And I'll keep doing that until I have a medium to strong urge to breathe. And then I'll breathe through my nose for one minute. So after I'm done, it'll look kind of like this. And I'll recover like that for one minute. And I'll repeat the exercise a total of six times. There is also another way to do this exercise where instead of bobbing your head back and forth, you're just walking. And you walk as many paces while holding your breath until you have that medium to strong urge to breathe, and then you recover by breathing through your nose for one minute. And again, you do this a total of six times. The reason this works to unblock your nose is mainly because you're building up your body's CO2. So anytime you hold your breath and you start to move, the CO2 in your body starts building up more and more. And as you start to build up that CO2 in your body, it kind of acts like a vasodilator. And it starts to open up all those nasal passages, not just in your nostrils, but also those nasal passages that lead to your lungs. Now, if you have a kid and you wanna make sure that that kid has really straight teeth and a wider jaw and prevent that kid from getting sleep apnea or any sleep disordered breathing or having snoring or any of those sort of issues, then this is gonna be a lot easier for you to correct. The first thing is to make sure that that kid is eating harder foods that require a lot of chewing. So things like carrots, apples, celery, different meats, all of these things will be tougher to eat than those normal mushy foods that we're giving our kids. This will help ensure that that kid starts developing their jaw muscles earlier on and also starts to initiate those stem cells in their jaws to start growing. And also you wanna make sure that that kid has proper oral posture at all times, especially during rest. So once again, that means making sure that their tongue is against the roof of their mouth, making sure that their lips are closed and their teeth are slightly touching. If they're like that at all times, it's gonna really help ensure that again, those stem cells get triggered and their jaws start to grow wider and forward. Now, the third thing you wanna focus on is to check that kid's breathing and making sure that they are breathing through their nose instead of their mouth, especially again during rest. Now, if you follow those first two steps, this third one is gonna become easier too. Now, one way to do this is to simply remind your kid to keep their lips closed and to keep breathing through their nose. And another way is to use the mouth tape on kids. This may seem like parental abuse or something like that to tape your kid's mouth shut, but when you start to realize all of the negative effects of mouth breathing and how you're more likely to develop ADHD, to be chronically tired and to have sleep apnea and heart disease and all these other sorts of issues, you can see that correcting this breathing earlier on and preventing all these issues is not anywhere close to parental abuse. Now, if you wanna do this, the best way to do this is in 10 minute increments. So have that kid wear that mouth tape while awake at first for 10 minutes at a time and see how they react. Because you wanna make sure that they can breathe through their nose in the first place. Sometimes kids have these really dormant noses where they're never used. They have these allergies where their noses are always stuffy. And that's where that nose unblocking exercise, the one that I showed you earlier, is gonna help out a ton. And before you start taping your kid's mouth shut while sleeping, try doing it when they're napping at first because when they're napping, you can actually watch them and see how they're breathing. And then after that, I'd recommend moving on to when they're sleeping. If that kid is able to handle that mouth tape in those two scenarios first, then I'd move on to doing it when they're actually sleeping at night. And when they're sleeping, it's better to have that child choose where they wanna sleep and also who they wanna sleep with 
and that person that they're sleeping with should also have a mouth tape on as well. And this should go on for at least those first few nights until that kid is used to it. And if you do this, you might start to see some drastic changes in your child as they're developing. And you may also prevent a lot of issues later on and also save a lot of money by not having to go to that orthodontist. Caffeine is one of the most widely used and abused drugs in the world. And most people think since caffeine is a stimulant, that it is therefore a solution to a lot of their sleep problems and to them feeling chronically tired. But what if I told you that your need for caffeine is a sign that you are not sleeping well